The RP2350 and Raspberry Pi Pico 2 are faster than its predecessors in terms of clock rates, the core design and with some accelerators. How does it compare against the RP2040 and the Pico? For some of my use cases, well, let me tell you. Hi, I'm John, your concierge to the world of the Raspberry Pi Pico, Pico 2, robotics, IoT and other fun tech. Remember to subscribe and join the community. Comparing performance for real world evaluation is hard work. To be useful, it needs to focus on the specific use case. Otherwise, it's very difficult to get a clear picture of performance. I've previously done some evaluations of the RP2040 and Pico, calculating the value of pi to a thousand decimal places. In this video, I'm going to update that and look at the RP2350. Then I'm going to look at the floating point unit on the RP2350 and its performance, comparing the floating point library we had on the RP2040. If you like this video and it helps your learning or projects, why not drop me a cash tip using the super thanks button below the video. I'm saving these up to get myself to open source in San Francisco next year and I'd appreciate your help in getting me there and of course I hope to see you there too. Please hit that like button on the video and subscribe for more. In previous videos I've looked at the performance of the RP2040, i.e. the Pico, and I've looked at that on things like Python as well as on C++. And in SeaWorld I've looked at that on bare metal, i.e. just running on the SDK and running with a kernel like FreeRTOS, and what difference that makes. In this video I'm going to update that and I want to look at the bare metal, i.e. just running under the SDK, but looking at the comparison between the performance of the RP2040, i.e. the Pico, and the RP2350, i.e. the Pico 2, and just see what that looks like for some of the use cases. And the use cases I'm going to pick are to look at calculating the value of pi to a thousand decimal places, uh, which is a lot of uh, numerical calculations, and some forward kinematics, which is robotics calculation and involves a lot of floating point maths. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay is one of the most experienced PCB manufacturers in the world. They pride themselves to be your best business partner, as well as a good friend in every aspect of your PCB needs. As well as being a PCB fabricator and PCB manufacturer, they also do 3D printing, CNC and sheet metal work. Have you seen their new design competition? Including a wide range of themes and real cash prizes. Go check it out today. As always, all of the code for the examples I'm going to show is actually on GitHub, and I've got a repo here that's got several examples in it. The example we're going to look at first is calculating the value of pi to a thousand decimal places and seeing how many times we can do that within a minute. And the algorithm I'm using is the Spigot algorithm, and I'm using this library here to do all of the work for me, so I don't have to write it. So the pi algorithm is this pi one core here, and that's the one I want to look at first. And if we have a look at the code, this is the same as I did in the previous video, so I'll very quickly talk through this. Um, basically, all I'm doing is setting up an alarm to call back in 60 seconds, and then I'm actually using this loop here to do some work. And the work is going to calculate the value of pi to a thousand decimal places using this uh, Spigger algorithm. Um, and that's really all I'm actually doing in there. And I'm just going to repeatedly do that. And then when the timer finally uh, runs, it's actually going to point out what the report is and the number of counts I've done. To convert this to run for the RP2350, I of course need to give it the platform and board information in the CMake file. Now I've also got a version of this um, that will run across two cores and that's a little bit more um, complex as we need to actually set up the second core and calculate what that's doing and push some data back between the two cores for counting purposes. But um, that's not, um, but pretty much it's the same work going on there and using the same algorithm. So on the RP2040 or Pico, I was getting 184 um, counts of the value of pi within a minute, 
or 360 if I was using both cores. On the RP2350, well actually on a single core I'm getting more than I was on the Pico. So on a single core I'm getting 391. Both cores I can double that up to 770. That's not bad. So why is this so much faster on the RP2350? Well partially this is because the 2350 is being clocked uh, faster. But it's not that much faster. What is it? 120 to 150 megahertz. So it's not that big an improvement. But the other thing is that we've got this Cortex M33 design and that is actually a faster design to start with. And that I think is what's given you that, that large uh, throughput enhancement that we're seeing on this test. But it makes this processor look really, really quite fast. What it isn't on this example is the floating point unit because this spigot calculation is all integer maths actually. There's no floating point maths in there even though we're calculating a floating point number. One of the big updates from the RP2040 to the RP2350 from the Pico to the Pico 2 is in floating point um, maths and how that's calculated. On the RP2040 back on the Pico we just had a library. Um, it was a specially written library that was actually placed on the uh, device itself but it's still a library so it's still all a library code uh, that was doing all the floating point calculations. On the um, RP2350 we now actually have a dedicated floating point unit with floating point registers and floating point calculations in the assembly code. So this is a significant enhancement onto that new core structure. So I'm going to test this out and I'm going to test this out using Ford Kinematics. So take my interest in robotics. So Ford Kinematics is basically taking all of the lengths of the different parts of the arm and all of the angles and actually calculating what the position therefore is of the end of the arm based on all of that information. And it's quite a lot of floating point maths to do. The library I'm going to use to do this, and I'm basically going to hard code this um, algorithm, is called Eigen. And Eigen is basically a matrix and uh, that sort of mathematical calculations library. So for my floating point test, I'm using this example here, FPU Perf. And um, let's have a look at that code. And this is pretty simple too. All we've got in here is um, a, another counter with a, a stop on it. And we are doing um, some test code here that's basically using the Eigen library to allow me to do this um, forward kinematics calculation. So I've got here all of the stages of the chain and it's going to go through and calculate and then it's actually going to return um, the sum of x, y and z uh, just because I was trying to get it to return something and not get uh, optimised out by the compiler. Um, and the, yeah, the code basically is going to repeatedly count that and um, how many times it can do that chain calculation within 10 seconds. Now I've got a version of this that also will run on the 2040. It's exactly the same code um, so that I can actually do the comparison between the two. So when I run this code actually on the RP2040, I find that within that 10 seconds, I can do this calculation of this uh, robotics calculation 5,558 times. Now on the RP2350, using that floating point unit in hardware, actually I can increase that massively, a 320% increase in performance and number of calculations I can do. Now on the RP2350, we also have the ability to back off and say, don't use the hardware for the floating point unit, but do this in software and the software uh, version of floating point calculations provided by the compiler. And that drops us down and then we only get an increase of 235% off of the RP2040. Um, to do that calculation and force it to use the software 
uh, compiler's version of floating point, what you do is use these CMake directives to um, change what you're using for floating point library. The RP2350 and therefore the Pico 2 is significantly faster than the Pico. In these use cases, the RP2350's integer arithmetic on a single core is faster than both cores on the RP2040. The floating point arithmetic is three times faster on the RP2350. Floating point arithmetic is something that's not traditionally done on microcontrollers, as they're generally considered to be too slow. But the calculation rates here for doing forward kinematics are quite reasonable. I think I can start pushing some of the planning and positional algorithms for my robot arm down onto the RP2350 to calculate. If you like this video and it helps your learning or projects, then why not drop me a cash tip using that super thanks button below the video. Remember, I'm saving these up to get myself to open source in San Francisco next year. I'd appreciate your help in getting me there and I hope to see you there too. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, and I hope you did, please do hit that like button and please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the next video. Bye-bye for now.